the electric guitar. An obvious application of physics to music. And it's an excellent tool for engaging your students in how physics applies to their everyday life. So let's study it. Now, the electrical guitar is still a guitar. And so before we study its electrical components, we need to first learn the general physics of guitars. Any plucked string on any guitar vibrates at several frequencies at once. Take a look. The note you're trying to play is called the first harmonic, or fundamental, and it looks like this. At twice the frequency is the second harmonic, and it looks like this. Again, at thrice the frequency is the third harmonic, which vibrates like this. You can prove that the higher harmonics are actually in the string by putting your finger where the note is supposed to be. Or you can start with your finger on the node and gently pluck. The wavelength of the second harmonic is the same as the length of the string, but the fundamental vibration doesn't even fit on the string. We have to imagine the rest of the wave, one up and one down. Therefore, the wavelength of the fundamental is twice the length of the string. Ah, the guitar formula. The velocity of the wave on the string equals the square root of the tension divided by mu, where mu is linear density, mass per unit length. For example, the length of the string that vibrates is L, and the mass of the string that vibrates is M. We have to ignore the excess string at the top, including cases where we put our finger down and pluck just the bottom part of the string. The idea of linear density is well illustrated by the bass guitar. These strings have much higher density than those on the standard guitar, and for that reason, and that they're longer, we get lower wave speed and lower frequencies. The idea of tension of a wave on a string can easily be appreciated by taking a cardboard box and stretching a rubber band across it and plucking it. You can do this on a guitar too. Now you can understand how a whammy bar works. It reduces the frequency by lowering the tension. If you want to verify the formula, you'll have to measure the tension in the string. You can estimate the tension with a spring scale and by analyzing the triangle that results. The tension equals twice the force of your pole divided by the sine of theta. But what about frequencies? Well, since velocity is wavelength times frequency, we can predict the frequency for any string. Since the wavelength of the fundamental is twice the length of the string, we find that the frequency is the square root of the tension divided by four times the length times the mass. So how is an electric guitar different than an acoustic guitar? Well, the first thing you'll notice is sustain. When I pluck a note on an acoustic guitar, it fades out pretty quickly, but when I play the same note on an electric guitar, it is sustained for a much longer time. That is because the string does not waste its energy vibrating the body of the guitar in order to make the sound. A regular acoustic guitar's entire body vibrates in the air when you pluck the string. And this does not happen as much with the electric guitar. The body is solid, heavy, and doesn't vibrate much. An electric guitar is so sensitive that you don't even have to pluck the strings. You can just pull off, or even just tap. The vibrations of the strings are picked up by these three pickups down here at the bottom. You can actually choose which pickup to use by flipping through this switch.
different pickups will highlight different harmonics. The pickups on a guitar are actually magnetic cores that are surrounded by copper coil, and each of them magnetizes the string on top of the coil. And the vibrations of those strings, or the movement of any magnet, generates a voltage in the coil loop. That voltage is the signal that gets amplified by the amplifier. So the strings have to be magnetic. You can appreciate that this is how pickups work by hooking your amplifier to a copper coil and putting a metal spring through it. Any vibration of the spring will sound on the amplifier. But there's one more thing that an electric guitar does that a regular guitar doesn't. Distortion. But how is distortion achieved? Well, one way is to amplify a speaker beyond what it's capable of. Even if you wanted to, you couldn't get an undistorted sound from an electric guitar. The motion of the strings over the pickups do not translate linearly into voltage for the speakers. For example, if the string is vibrating vertically, it is sometimes deep in the magnetic field and at other times far from it. Even simple harmonic motion will become distorted. But that distortion is a unique quality of electrified instruments, which are a new and important chapter in the history of music and an exciting experience in the physics of sound.